doing it today with my colleague Keith. Now if you're new to motion amplification, I really recommend you check out the video in the link below first. So this video is all about updating you on the benefits we've had using this technology, which has been developed by RDI in the US. Over the last year, we've had some fantastic updates with this system, the Iris M, and we're going to go through those with you today. So Keith, we've used this technology intensively over the last year. Where do you think we've had like the most benefit and applications for using it? Well, we've used it on a range of applications, from uh, rotating equipment to uh, pipework surveys, we've done structural vibration on buildings, yeah. uh, all sorts of different things like that. We've, it really, it's, the range of applications it just keeps growing, I think. Yeah. And where, on some of those applications, let's take rotating equipment, where do you see the big benefit with it with rotating plant? Because we've all got vibration analyzers. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, we fit it in uh, to our normal route vibration. So where we've been around doing our, our route measurements and we found uh, high levels, the camera's great to just go and quickly put it against our machine and find out what the root cause is. Yeah. So we don't, we've got this phase now, we just, just get the camera yeah. out. Don't, yeah. We don't bother going in trying to do cross-channel phase and all that kind yeah. of stuff. There's no point because it's so quick. Yeah, just... and you've got the 2.3 million sensors. So really on bases, and, and I've seen, obviously done a lot of videos with you, uh, for me, it really does excel on those bases, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. We've had some wicked base problems we've found with it. Yeah. We've done some, uh, just recently, we've had some pipe work problems. It's damaged the base and you can really see it. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, problems where the, the, the pipe, the, the structure of the base is, is weak. Yeah. So you get structural weakness. Yeah. Uh, we've seen loose bolts. Yeah. Uh, we've seen all sorts of problems on bases. Yeah. Any base problem, the camera just excels. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is as well, it, I mean, it can be used just as a troubleshoot tool where we, you get a job and someone says, can you come and have a look at this? And it's worked well with that, hasn't it? And we've done a lot of that with pipe work and I feel that's worked quite well. But what about the uh, frequency? Range. You've been, uh, you did some high frequency recently and some high work. Like. Yeah, yeah, so uh, we felt one of the areas we could push it in the camera was uh, looking at high frequency vibration. Yeah. And the, the reason for that is it measures in displacement. Yeah. So it's really favorable at low frequency. So we wanted to see how, how high we could go with it. Yeah. And uh, so we've got some really good shots on a power turbine yeah. on, where they had high casing levels. Yeah. And we thought, well, let's go and have a look around that, that bearing, and there was, yeah. there was leaking oil. Yeah. So we put the camera on it, just a quick scan, yeah. and at 7,500 RPM, this machine yeah. runs at, yeah. we found a crack in the, uh, in the weld, and it really highlighted oh, it. That's brilliant. That, that's brilliant. And yeah. interestingly, I did a job, I got asked to look at a deaerator vessel on a CHP plant, and I remember that showed, uh, I think it was around 1 hertz, yeah. it was uh, vibrating out, absolutely fantastic, and the camera, excelled on that um, so yeah another benefit with a camera is you can really use it for commissioning and verification and sort of just doing scans maybe when you don't even know there's a problem there we've had quite a lot of success with that yeah. and i remember that cooling water one that was quite good wasn't it yeah it was, it was awesome really blew us away i think um, the, the, uh, the client just asked us to go and have a quick scan. We've had a few problems, we just want to have a look, overview of the machinery. Yeah. So it's a row, a load of pumps, and we managed to just pick out one that had a, uh, a really bad base problem, yeah. and uh, it was caused by this flow vibration, yeah. which we never picked up on our normal root vibration, but because it's all in low frequency displacement, yeah. but the camera just excelled on that. So. It's a fair point, that, Keith, because uh, Generally on his routes, we're, we're looking in velocity and obviously acceleration for bearings. We're not doing routine displacement measurements. That's and right. on that job, I've seen the data you showed me, uh, it was amazing that, like you say, it wasn't really picked up on the route, but with the camera, because it's a displacement visualization tool, it really nailed it. Yeah, so I think seeing it as a routine scanning tool as well is becoming yeah. uh, more apparent to that. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. I think for me though, one of the biggest things with a camera technology where it was a bit of a surprise was using it 
as a communication tool. I didn't realise the impact that was going to have because we're vibration guys, we're talking one times, two times. But when we've been showing these videos, the response we've got has been phenomenal, hasn't it? Yeah. Some of these bass problems and that, uh, it really gets the point across. Uh, and for me, that's probably one of the biggest benefits with this camera. I think so, yeah. A lot of the users have said to us, like feed feedback, they've said that it's made their job a lot easier. Instead of showing graphs and squiggles, yeah. uh, they're able to just show, them, show a video to their work, yeah. uh, colleagues and get the message across very yeah. easily. Yeah. I mean, this is a bit odd, but I've actually found, and some of my clients, that they seem actually more willing to do complete the job and rectify it because when yeah, they see it they right. understand it yeah. and I think uh, yeah we take that for granted as VA guys. Yeah, it's a fantastic system for sure. Yeah. Well what we're going to do now we're going to have a little chat we might move and we might talk about some other uh, updates with the camera system. Last year there's been some fantastic updates to the Iris M system. The first one is the frequency displacement module. Keith, you've got a vibration analyzer. What benefit is having this capability within this system? Oh well, it's fantastic really because we can take non-contact measurements with the camera. Yeah. We've got that visual aspect, but the fact that we can take non-contact measurements anywhere in that image is really powerful. Yeah. So stuff like, let's say this pipe work behind us, you could easily get accurate readings off there? Yeah, yeah, we could literally turn the camera right now, get some shots, and we're able to just pick out along the pipe work measurement points that we wanted. So we could measure deflection along the whole pipe work you can see there. So it could take 10, 20, 30 readings. Yeah. So how accurate is it? Is it as accurate as if I went up there and put an Excel on? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's the same as having an accelerometer, it's spot on. But we have to set the distance, I, have to, I assume we have to tell the system. Yeah, there's a bit of a setup with that, so you need to uh, put points on there and take the measurements for those points, yeah. so you always get the right amplitude. Um, the frequency is always correct when you take the measurements. Yeah. And what about if we were doing, say, a typical uh, pump where I can get access uh, with my uh, analyzer? Can you do phase, anything like that? Just yeah, well, that's another really good thing about using the, uh, the frequency displacement measurements is that we can see the time waveform. So we can go we can go right next to a coupling and uh, shoot over the coupling, take yeah. the drive end of the motor, drive end of the pump, or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, we can take the waveforms, overlay them, and see the phase relationship. All oh, right, and that's because all the videos start from one position we don't need obviously a tackle yeah, that's it yeah. can, it's all to do with referencing against each other exactly okay cool yeah. i think one of the things i, I think the real benefit is if if you go and collect some uh, data on site you can get back to the office and then i guess just keep taking vibration means wherever you want on the the video image yeah exactly yeah it's, it's quite funny actually because it's you always see more when you go and sit in the office don't you and sit down and have a cup of coffee and have a yeah. play then but, yeah but really then, with this system, I suppose we're talking about there's two systems here. There's, there's a visual aspect and then there's this fre frequency side. So you can use both or, I guess, uh, yeah. either or, really. Yeah, it doesn't require you to have a vibration background, yeah. but a vibration analyst can use it in that way if they need to. So just if you need that engineering background, use that visual side of it. Yeah. Yeah. And what about frequency ranges? Uh, how do we adjust that? We can, we can, I guess we can look at some high frequencies and low frequencies. Yeah, so our, our F-max at the moment is up to 650 hertz. Okay. Uh, it really excels at the lower frequencies, so we go from zero upwards. And what if I wanted to take a higher resolution spectrum with a camera, how would I do that? Oh, it's simple, you just take a longer reading. So okay. A lot of our readings you see were about three to six seconds, yeah. but when we get, we still see the peaks. Yeah. But if we wanted to get a real defined peak in there, yeah. split some peaks up, we could just take a longer reading. So I hope that gives you a bit of an overview uh, of the frequency displacement module. And like I say, it's a great tool, and um, just get out there and use it. So 
So one of the updates I was really looking forward to was filtering. And it didn't disappoint, did it Keith? No, it's brilliant. Can you just tell me a bit about it and how it works? So, really simple. What it allows you to do is to say, in this video, just show me what X frequency is doing, or Y frequency or Z frequency, so that you can, you can filter out frequencies that you don't want to see in the video. Okay, yeah. And that, I'm guessing on something like a fan, where you've got, say, a motor frequency, fans running at a different speed, if you just want to see the motion from the fan, we can isolate that, yeah. and that's using, out, playing the filters, is it? Yeah. yeah, so you take your spectrum normally, you can yeah. see then the, the, the frequency peaks, and then it's a really easy to use system where you can just put uh, your filters, band passes, band stop, high pass, low pass, yeah. and you put those around the peaks that you want to see or exclude, yeah. process the video again, and you've got another new video just how you wanted it. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, I've used it so much, and uh, one of the examples I remember was at the uh, where we had these shaker screens, and they got some crack pipe work, yeah. crack duct work, and uh, we actually isolated one of the frequencies on this pipe and just looked at the motion and we could see that was the, the problem for everything else. It, it made it so yeah. simple and, and again showing it to the customer, very visual. Um, that was a really good one, you could see two different speeds of screens as well in there, yeah. shaker screens and you could filter out one so it stopped all together and then yeah. filter out another one. You can see the, the effect that each one was having on the pipe work. Yeah, remember that. And uh, you do some stuff on alternators with different modes of vibration and that. Yeah, so for uh, for like for the likes of um, reciprocating machines, it's really good to see what the different frequencies are affecting. Um, you can see how uh, the firing frequencies on a recip, for example, or you yeah. can see the AV mounts, how they're working. Yeah, really good for, for that. Yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Another benefit, isn't it, we've had with this uh, filtering is we know the camera has to be stable but we can't guarantee that every time so we've been on unstable floors it's been absolutely brilliant for that yeah it? that was a bit of a surprise really wasn't it yeah so if it's at the uh a, a different frequency to what we're looking at we can filter out that vibration can't we yeah exactly so if we're looking at uh, a machine that's, that's vibrating at, at a certain frequency and we're at the one next to it, which runs at a different speed, yeah. we, and the floor vibrates, we yeah. can just move to that machine yeah. and film back at the one we want to see, and then we just filter out the frequency of our yeah. movement. So what would you do then in a situation where what you're looking at, the, the frequency is the same as what the floor's vibrating, how would you get around that though? So in that case, well you do get some floor vibration, and you can filter it, but then we've got a really nice bit in the software, we can stabilise it as well. Yeah, I've used that. Before. Yeah, so you yeah. just make sure that you get a shot with something in the background, you can stabilise too, and you can stabilise that. Too. Yeah. Now, uh, I think that's a good summary of the, uh, the filtering. Uh, we use it all the time. Um, and your, your insight into machines is just unbelievable. In the last year, I've been viewing machines now totally different to what I originally did. It's, uh, it really is uh, an awesome tool. So the latest update to the system is the Motion Explorer, which is basically a file management system of all the videos and that. And I think it really rounds this system off. Keith, do you want to just chat and just tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, well, it's actually a whole new piece of software that comes with the system. Yeah. So it's quite a big update, really. Yeah. Um, what it does is it aggregates all your data, so you're able to create a hierarchy of, uh, of all your assets, all your different points where you take measurements from, and then you can store videos to that, you can launch new acquisitions with the same settings for that asset itself. Yeah. Um, you can also put in JPEGs in there, you can put reports to each individual asset, so you can keep track of those okay. things. So if I've got, like on a site like this, I can sort of build areas, uh, machines and, and basically assign it, a bit like a vibration uh, database. Exactly like that, yeah. 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 So yeah, we really like the Motion uh, Explorer, like I said, it really rounds the system off. 
If you want to get a bit more detail, if you watch the video shortly after this, you get a real feel for what it can do.